Okay. Um, well, thank you for joining us. I know others will file in as we get going. This is the ninth in our series of conversations titled Criticism Inside Alternatives Alongside Organizing to Intervene in Anthropology's Future. This uh, series of conversations has been sponsored by the Renner Grant Foundation and the School of Social Sciences at UC Irvine. Um, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the UCI website later on. And in addition, there's live captioning being provided, which you can access by going to the bottom of your Zoom screen, clicking on the more button and selecting live captioning so you can see that. But we're also going to be having a translation of the captioning into Portuguese, which will be posted um, later as well. Um, I'm Bill Maurer. I'm the Dean of Social Sciences at the University of California at Irvine. And I'd like to begin um, just with a land acknowledgement. Uh, the event and the UC Irvine campus and its servers, which are helping us run all of this, are within the ancestral and unceded shared territories of the Achaman and Tongva peoples. Their region extends from the Santa Ana River to Elisa Creek and beyond. As members of a land grant institution, we acknowledge the Achaman and Tongva as the traditional land caretakers whose efforts to steward and protect the land continue today. And I think I'll hand it off now to Taylor. Thanks, Bill. I'm Taylor Nelms. For those who uh, don't know already who I am, I'm the Senior Director of Research at the Filene Research Institute. And today we are absolutely thrilled to be joined by Dr. Federico Nieberg, Professor of Social Anthropology and Chair of the Graduate Program in Social Anthropology at the National Museum of the Federal University in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Federico was trained in anthropology in Mexico. He completed his MA in Buenos Aires and his PhD at the National Museum. He's carried out field work in Mexico, Argentina, and most recently Brazil and Haiti. Federico is the lead researcher for the National Scientific and Technological Development Council and coordinates the Center for Research on Culture and Economy. He is a member of the Brazil Lab at uh, Princeton University and the Inter-University Institute for Research and Development in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. He's been an invited professor at the Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris, the University of Chicago, and the University of Buenos Aires, and a fellow at the Institute for Advanced Studies at Princeton. So uh, a very long and very impressive biography, but we're very excited to talk with Federico about some new work um, that he's doing uh, that really connects with communities um, in Brazil and um, around the world, and to think with him about um, the state of emergency that we have found ourselves in increasingly routinely. We're, later on, we'll be joined uh, by three PhD students, Kim Fernandez from the University of Pennsylvania, Nina Medvedeva from the University of Minnesota, Minnesota and Nima Yomo from the University of California, Irvine. We want to thank the Winter Grin Foundation and the UCI School of Social Sciences uh, for their support in making this entire series possible. And want to remind you all to please do use the Q&A function in the Zoom um, interface to ask us questions. And we'll try to get to those questions toward the end of the conversation. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. And thank you so much, Federico, for being here. Why don't we get started? Yeah, why don't we get started? Um, Taylor, thank you, Bill. Uh, thank you, you all, Nina, Kim, Nima, and Jen in advance. Uh, it, it is wonderful to share this time with you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me and having me here uh, in this so interesting and challenging environment. <laughs> it is interesting and challenging, and we really appreciate you joining us um, from 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 your home in in, in Brazil, where I know um, the the you know the 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 moment and context is extraordinarily challenging. I'm very I'm very hopeful that maybe we'll get a shot of your cat in the background, or maybe some monkeys um, hanging out outside um, as they are known to do. Um, but maybe to get us started, Federico, you can tell us a little bit about kind of where you work and what you're working on and how you ended up doing the work that you're doing. So a little bit of your personal biography. Well, I don't know how long I will take uh, uh, telling you something about my biography because my trajectory, my personal trajectory is in a way linked with emergencies from the beginning, I, I could say, or almost from the beginning. Something like the beginning exists, I don't know what it was. But I was born in Argentina in the Northwest of the country near Bolivia and, and Chile in the Andean 
uh, region of Argentina, of, of Argentina that is uh, not so well uh, known because we have a, a, a picture of Argentina focused on Buenos Aires, which is very different uh, than the place where I was uh, raised, which, has, which is a very multi-ethnic, multinational, multilingual environment. Then uh, I, 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 I raised in a Jewish family in a very Catholic and conservative and anti-Semitic environment, we, we could say. Then some kind of, uh, very, I, I have uh, some kind of uh, anthropological sensibility from the beginning, we can say, maybe. Uh, then, um, then when uh, I was a child, uh, the two uh, parallel phenomena uh, occur and stimulate my sensibility, I think. Of course, I am thinking this uh, retrospectively, you know, uh, of, you know but uh, one was the inflation in the, in the, in the late 70s in Argentina, the, the first huge wave of inflation. And the second uh, element was the uh, dictatorship, political violence. Uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the intervention of the military in the, in the political uh, process, uh, which uh, led the country to a uh, long and very violent dictatorship, 30,000 uh, people murdered in a few years. And my family went to exile to Mexico, where uh, I was, uh, in fact, trained as anthropology as anthropologist and you see this I, I, I would like to, to point some uh, to make some points about this around this because uh, this uh, seminar is uh, on the this uh, complicated uh, frontier frontier between inside outside and alongside anthropology and uh, being uh, trained in anthropology first trained in anthropology in, in Argentina in in, Brazil, in Mexico sorry and having this kind of Latin America trajectory, I lived all my life in this frontier. You know, when I was first trained in, in, in anthropology in Mexico, uh, Mexican anthropology, maybe you, you, you already know, is a very high politicized uh, milieu. Uh, the, the anthropology in Mexico is a, uh, was born as a project of national, nation building project in a way. Then uh, to be a student in anthropology there uh, implied to discuss uh, the frontier between academia, the political uh, dimension of life, social, civil, social movements uh, alongside all the time. You know, uh, even in my first uh, in my first um, uh, ethnographic uh, experience in Oaxaca in the Sierra Mazateca. Uh, this was very, very, uh, very linked to, to this kind of experience. You know, I arrived there uh, uh, by the hands of uh, people who were very involved in politics uh, in, that, in, that, in that region. My subject, my first subject of research was linked to their demands also, political conflicts, uh, modernization of agric agriculture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then uh, this kind of um, this kind of, of of experience in the in the frontier between the 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 glass box of academia and the and the political milieu it was a very very um, a, a, an experience I, I I feel and I lived from the beginning in my life of anthropo as anthropologist, I, I could say. Then when I, when the, I finished my undergraduate in, in, in anthropology in Mexico, I moved to, to Argentina where uh, democracy came back <laughs> after the dictatorship. And it was a very interesting uh, time also because the anthropology was in, pro in, the pro in a process of reborn, we can say, because uh, it was a discipline who, who which was very, very attacked by the, by the military regime, even closed in the, in the university for, for a while. Then I lived in Buenos Aires, not in Salta, in my, in my hometown for almost uh, four, four years, in this kind of very, very politicized also environment where anthropologists were always called 
to say something about what is happening outside the university, you know, all the time, all the time. Then I, 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 I try to, I, I, I feel the necessity to, to continue my, my training as an anthropologist. I, 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 at that time, I, I would not to go very far because I was coming from Mexico, then the US and Europe was not in my chart. And I discovered Brazilian anthropology from Argentina. And it was a very, very uh, <laughs> impressive discovery uh, uh, because of this. Uh, uh, then I will arrive on for this. But uh, I, I moved from, uh, from Argentina to, to Brazil in 1988. It was a very important year for two reasons. First, there was a huge hyperinflationary processes in both countries. Then I feel hyper, hyperinflation as a citizen. And then moving countries, changing currencies, you know, <laughs> having fellowships in another country, in another currencies, etc. It was a very, very daily life uh, matter hyperinflation. But on the other side, uh, 1988 was the, a key moment in, in, in Brazil, in the Brazilian political redemocratization process because of the, of the, the new uh, uh, Brazilian constitution was proclaimed at, that year. And it was very interesting to arrive to Brazil at that moment and to see my professors, the, the scientific associations, the Brazilian Anthropological Association, the equivalent for, of the AAA, for example, participating in a very intensive way in the making of the new constitution. Uh, then uh, putting their knowledge at service of, the, of a new chart for the country, uh, recognizing uh, native Brazilian uh, people rights, uh, um, uh, um, Descent, descent, uh, descendants of slave people rights also, matter of gender, sexuality, etc. Uh, then the, and, the, and, the, and this constitution uh, also recognized, established a, a key role for the anthropologists as professionals uh, uh, in the maintenance of these uh, rights on, or this recognition of rights over time, no? this is a key issue now because now we are living in a very dramatic process when, where this uh, constitution is at stake because of the attacks of the, uh, of the, of the fascist project of, uh, of the current uh, government of the Capitan uh, Jair Bolsonaro, but this is another, this is a, this is another issue. The, 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 the issue I, I now try to underlie is that I, wa I became anthropologist always in a hybrid environment, inside, outside, alongside, as, as you said, uh, in a very highly, high, highly politicized environment. And in Brazil particularly, I was fascinated for the exciting, to me at least, <laughs> an original combination of a very strong theoretical and empirical um, discipline linked to international debates, and at the same time committed with the uh, painful and every ris ever risky process of social and political, economical democratization in Brazil. Then this kind of combination is a very singular combination, I, I, I guess, of, of, of the Brazilian anthropologist, anthropology and also of the institution where I uh, took my PhD and I am now a prof professor uh, uh, on anthrop uh, of anthropology. Uh, years later, I began to, 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 to work um, on this, uh, uh, on this uh, personal experience, uh, uh, carrying out a project uh, on a comparative project project on this binational experience of hyperinflations, we could say, and and the and the idea to to to, to work on emergencies uh, rise uh, for the first time, I I could say, no, 
uh, the, 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 the key uh, issue for me from the beginning and still now is that at that time in the, in, in the beginning of the uh, 2000, uh, or I was already a professor at that time when I began to work on hyperinflation and uh, monetary crisis and economic emergencies, etc. Uh, at that time, I, 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 I didn't call it economic emergencies. I discovered later on that this has something to do with economic emergencies. I could, uh, uh, came back on this uh, later. But it, it, my first, my main issue, we could say, um, when I began the project was to discuss a little bit the dominant performative theories at that time, you know, uh, which uh, imply some kind of causality among the uh, expert ideas and practices, monetary ideas and practices, and the vernacular ideas and practices. I, I was very interesting, interested in, 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 in figure out some kind of more uh, dynamic uh, uh, theoretical model, a uh, more, uh, we can say more multidimensional or more cybernetic maybe, using the Batesonian <laughs> ideas or circular uh, 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 relationship between these two planes, the expert and the vernacular ideas and practices to deal with, at that time with inflation or hyperinflation, now I would say with uh, economic emergencies also. Then this is, uh, I never published a book, I published a, 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 some articles because I, I never finished my book on inflation because I entered in a new project. I, 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 I have not a very linear trajectory, as you know, I am jumping from one project to another. This is a, <laughs> this is a characteristic of myself in this, but I went to Haiti, to the Republic of Haiti, of Haiti for the confluence of many, many um, unsuspected reasons. I was invited to, to participate in the foundation of an institute at the frontier also in the, in the, uh, between the, the academia and the intervention, social intervention, participation, etc. At the same time, the country, uh, Haiti, was undergoing a military intervention of the nation, uh, United Nations with the, com with the Brazilian command. Then it was very interesting to be there and it was, a, it was a very challenging anthropological environment because it, was a, it is a country who, which was lived in emergency when uh, where emergency and crisis are in some sort, uh, in sort uh, endemic, we could say. Then, uh, then yes, this is. And, and the last year or a couple of years ago, I was, uh, when I went to, to to the US to pass a year in Princeton, I was planning to write a, a book uh, on economic emergencies and, uh, and I was, um, I was uh, uh, in a way uh, cut or overwhelmed by the fact of the pandemic. And the fact of the pandemic and the emergency, multi-dimensional emergencies that the pandemic implies uh, transform, uh, risk to transform into a banality. I feel any things I could say at that time, <laughs> then I stopped again and I came back, came back to Rio and began a, a very huge collaborative project on the economic dynamics of the pandemic in, in, in the Rio de Janeiro to give more empirical substrate to all of this. I, I am talking about in, I don't know, in 15 minutes. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so. Yeah, and, 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 and Federico, it's so great to hear um, this kind of personal and academic intellectual biography and um, the way that you kind of laid out the different sorts of relationships between academic knowledge and practice and political practice and political crisis. Um, but I do, before we go to the collaborative part and ask you a bit about that, I'd also like to ask you, just because you know, you're at the, the Museo Nacional, um, to talk about the institutional crises that um, that also shaped your work and that you also positioned your work in relation to. Yes, the museum, the National Museum is a very, is a, it's one of the, it's the oldest uh, scientific institution in Brazil first. It was founded in the 19th century in, in the line of the natural history museums, uh, all 
along the west world, <laughs> we can say. And, and uh, then in the, in the 60s, it was the first uh, institution where the first uh, graduate program in social anthropology in Brazil was uh, created. Then it, it is and, uh, uh, by people who took uh, their PhDs from the US, France, Britain, then it was born as a very cosmopolitan place. This is very interesting. And I think that it was the first institution in Brazil, but this uh, gave uh, uh, some kind of tone to the Brazilian anthropology without any pretension, but in a way it, uh, it's, it's a very high cosmopolitan anthropology made in the periphery, not in the north or in the global south as you, I don't know, that is another thing. And then um, when, uh, then it was founded the graduate program in 68. And then I arrived to uh, 20 years later, I began a professor after uh, my PhD. Uh, uh, and then uh, through the, this time, uh, anth Brazilian anthropology grew up uh, a lot in, in many senses, you know. Uh, the first, the main uh, movement, I think, was the internationalization of the discipline, not only because of the participation of anthropologists in international debates, uh, publications, not only this, most important for a peripheric anthropology, doing fieldwork outside. That is, that is a very, very important thing. Uh, my, my case is an example. I, was, I began to do, my, uh, do field work in the Caribbean, which was absolutely unthinkable uh, for me and for uh, my colleagues some years uh, before. Other colleagues uh, launched projects in, 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 projects in, in other uh, South American countries, African regions and countries, Europe also. We may have lost Federico for just a second. He warned us that this may happen. Um, so we'll hopefully get him reconnected in just a second. Federico, are you back? Yes, I am here. I okay. was talking all the time. I don't know where, <laughs> where you stopped to hear me, sorry. Only the last five seconds or so. So you can just kind of pick right I, back I, up. I, 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 I am trying to go fast, but the, the thing is that the, this process which was very linked to, uh, because we are living as anthropologists in Brazil, mainly in public universities. This is a very, very important uh, issue. We are public servants in Brazil. And not the, 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 all the, the, the money and the institutions are public money and public institutions, the main, uh, at least. Then we are very exposed to, to political, uh, changes and fluctuations, you know. Uh, then we lived this from uh, the crisis. We began to live the crisis in 19, uh, 19 no, uh, 20, 2015, 2014, 2016, when the economic crisis arrived in Brazil and produced on, or made sure with a huge political up level, I, I think a very movement uh, and um, and it was very uh, tragic for us because this, uh, this new phase, new process where social sciences uh, went under attack from the government, cutting, uh, cutting money, but not only denouncing, for example, uh, from uh, 2019 on, the former, the first minister of or secretary of education of Bolsonaro government attacked directly anthropologists and anthropology saying that our enemy are you, you know? <laughs> so the social sciences in general, the humanities as he called or they called, but mainly anthropology. And this is, they have good reasons for this <laughs> because of course, anthropologists are, are modestly, but are, important actors in the democratization of the Brazilian society, as I told you. Then this uh, political process mixture with a very tragic event, which was the fire or the burning of our museum uh, two, uh, a little bit more than two years ago, 
it was a very tragic uh, event, which reduced to nothing, or almost nothing, this uh, centenary institution, uh, all the offices, the library, the collections. It was a very, the main, uh, the, <laughs> the most important natural history museum in Brazil, the fifth in the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we, we began to live the crisis and the emergency in our skin in a very, very, very dramatic, dramatic way, you know, not from afar, but from within, from our own bodies, I, I could say. It was very, very, very uh, complicated. It was a two month, the fire was two months before the election of Bolsonaro. Then we, you know, and one and another, you know, it was very, very, very difficult. And it was very challenging because we need to survive. We have students, we have uh, research, researches uh, going on. We need to, to, to survive. We are very committed to survive, but it, it, we need to be very, very, this is very interesting because we, we are uh, thinking about uh, emergencies. We are, we, 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 we must to deal with emergencies institutionally in all the levels. No? It's a very multidimensional process. Then we need to deal with this from the personal point of view. <laughs> we all have families, affects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We need to leave this uh, from a, an institutional point of view also, because we are living in an institution who are, which are under attack and also was uh, was destructed. <laughs> now it's in process of reconstruction. We have very very uh, positive uh, data <laughs> for <laughs> that this is oof, <laughs> for good. Yes, but anyway, the, uh, we, we are experiences uh, experiencing uh, dramatic times in a multi level uh, uh, dimension or multi level process, which uh, demand. Uh, from us to be very um, focused, very clever, and to study <laughs> and they say to comprehend what is going on at the same time while we are, we need to act on this, Con uh, 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 say to drive this process a little bit in a way, modestly because it's huge, of course, who are we, but anyway, we, are, we, we have this space, institutional space, which is in a way the pandemic <laughs> transforming our homeless situation in a kind of, you know, universalizing <laughs> this and, and, and uh, gave us some time to, to have a new building, to have a new institution, we can say. Yeah. And then the, 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 the link I will try to make is uh, this uh, always, as, uh, as I try to explain uh, talking uh, uh, about my own personal trajectory, we are still trying to comprehend what is going on and to act on this process at the same time. You know, this is a very, very challenging situation. And I, this is why I, I am very uh, proud now and very happy to, to be the chair for this year of the department, of our department, because it's a very, very uh, key time uh, for us, uh, of course, not only for me, we are a very nice group of, of, of professors and students fighting against uh, all of these in the middle of all of these. And it is very challenging to think, to write on emergencies and to deal, to live with this at the same time. And the risk, to st I, I, I would like to underline this because we are, uh, I, 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 there are so much uh, thinking that are uh, being writing about what is going on in the planet now. And I feel all days, it's a feeling, it's, a, it's, an, it's an all day feeling, I could say, that the risk to, to, to say banalities is so, so, so strong because we, we don't know what will happen next week. It's, you know, here in Brazil, it's very, very hard, this kind of sentiment. And it, not only here, of course. Then this kind, the, the, this kind of living in a permanent state of uncertainty, mm -hmm. I think that the uh, demand of us a very, very strong theoretical 
empirical and political action <laughs> every day, you know? <laughs> yes. I, I, so, Federico, this is, you know, amazing to hear you talk about the ways that the emergency serves in a sense to eliminate any pretense of division between knowledge or writing or thought and, you know, as Bill said earlier, kind of social and political action or intervention. I think that that's, you know, a really critical kind of realization, right, that um, that, that pretense cannot survive, right, in the, the kind of moment of emergency. But I also think it's really interesting in that moment that what you have done is pivot your intellectual work, but also your political your work, your practical work, to a project on, uh, you know, as you were explaining earlier, a collaborative project about the kind of economic aspects of the pandemic as an emergency, right? And, and you've written that this project is, you know, exploring the daily search for a good and worthy life, right? Um, in the turbulent waters of, of the emergency. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about your methods for this, for this project. In particular, I'm thinking about the mode of virtual community engagement that you're trying to pioneer in some sense, right, um, through this project. And why, maybe there's no why, but, but it's interesting that that's a pivot that's happening now, right, in the moment in which the emergency is kind of exposing the, um, the impossibility of maintaining that division. Yes, this is very interesting because uh, this, this, uh, the very concept of, of public ethnography or public anthropology in this kind of milieu does not uh, make sense. You know, all anthropology is public <laughs> and should be because if not, you you need to be you know. No, you cannot speak about anything, you know. I think this is a this is another discussion, but we can maybe uh, enter in it uh, uh, because it's very very important. I was I myself was interested in the last time to 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 think about not emergencies in general, but in, on economic emergencies and particularly before the pandemic on the econo on the relationship between economy and life which uh, economic emergencies reveal in a very, very frankly and confusing way. With the pandemic, as you know, this uh, became a very public issue, no? Uh, governors, presidents uh, took part of on economy and economy or life. Yesterday, a uh, major of one of the most important cities, more biggest, bigger cities in, the, in Brazil, uh, simply say that the people need to sacrifice literally their life to save the economy <laughs> in the middle of this pandemic. You know? It's like something like the governor of Texas said at the beginning of the pandemic, for example. It's not nothing new and nothing so original, of course. But here now it's very, very complicated. Then when I, I arrived from, uh, yes, I, 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 I will speak in, in first person, but uh, I am part of a team of researchers. Then the research we, I, I, I am uh, involved in now involves a team. And this is a very important thing. Thing, thing also in my trajectory in the way I think that we should uh, make anthropology in these times on this kind of subject there is nothing to do about the solitary uh, <laughs> individual uh, Malinowski and anthropologist going somewhere to reveal some kind of truth that is absolutely uh, misleading uh, now now it's not I am not uh, discovering nothing about this, but uh, I am all, only underlying this. Uh, th this. This kind of process, economic emergency is so huge, multi, multi-dimensional. If we, if, we, if we want to, to capture something, we need to, 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 to be a team, not a, a, solitary, a solitary or an individual researcher. Then first, methodologically, and theoretically, we need a team, and we are a team. Then I am speaking in the first person, but there is a team, other researchers. I will not name uh, them now here because uh, you don't know, but you will uh, discover them in the, I, I hope, in the forthcoming uh, publications, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I hope. But anyway, it's a team for, uh, uh, um, formed by uh, uh, 
PhDs and also graduate uh, students. Almost uh, 15 people uh, uh, composed the form the, the, the team. And um, 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 we have some of us have a long relationship with uh, some of us uh, have a long experience uh, uh, researching in the uh, favelas of Rio de Janeiro. You know? uh, and some of us also had a, have a long relationship with uh, uh, civil society organizations based in, in, in the favelas. Uh, then we uh, began a conversation with one of these organizations in the huge area in the north part of the city, uh, which is a very active uh, organization called uh, Redes da Mare, Mare Network. Mare is the region formed by uh, 14 favelas. Uh, 150,000 people live over there, more or less. It's very near the center of the, uh, from the center of the, from the Rio de Janeiro downtown. I mean, it's very strategically uh, placed. It was also uh, targeted by a military intervention uh, four uh, years ago, five years ago, because it's, it's one of the places with, uh, where uh, urban violence explodes in, in, in Rio, as you know, maybe it's a very, very violent city. <laughs> then uh, uh, it's a very, and the, 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 this organization made a, very important researches bef uh, uh, before we arrived with the idea to, to do something together, you know, uh, or we all, not only arrived, but we began to, to, to talk about the possibility to, to think, uh, to do something together because they, they did a very uh, impressive and deep uh, census, for example, of the region economic census also, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have a very good base to, to have some kind of, uh, of uh, demographic economic picture of the region before we began the, the, the work. And at that time, uh, at, by the end of the last uh, year, uh, when we began this, uh, we have an, uh, then we, we we began to discuss, and in the in the in the pandemic uh, time, it's very complicated to to develop classic ethnography, of course, and and how the, the our common interest was to to figure out what what was happening or what is happening with the people in the favelas in the in in this time of of of, of pandemic, uh, trying not only to uh, exoticize the, the time of crisis, which is very usual in some kind of literature, but also to, 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 to understand what is going on. Because uh, these are people, as in Haiti, in another level, another, another configuration, that are uh, living always in crisis, you know, without salaries, without wages, uh, trying to make their lives going jumping from one activity to another you know the the world of informality as uh, some people call it and etc 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 then the, the, when when we uh, began to think about this we uh, we were very aware to the risk to exoticize uh, the the time of crisis <laughs> the, the all this relation between the extraordinary the ordinary you know uh, you know, a structure and events as you as you as you want. You can you can put uh, many uh, um, theoretical schemes to to discuss a very huge problem: how people lives during a time which is uh, seeing and living for, uh, for uh, or by other people as an extraordinary time. No, the uh, the, the the national congress, for example issued an act uh, uh, that established uh, an a state of uh, an a state of uh, a state of emergency act they launched emergency aid for this kind of population for example what happened with this then uh, it was a very very difficult very no very challenging uh, uh, 
uh, idea to, 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 to launch a, a research in this, uh, in this context without the possibility to, to do a classic ethnography, to go there. <laughs> because uh, one of the condition of, of the, uh, our partners at the, who are based on this region was, uh, please don't came here because it's, it's, you know, for their safety and our safety, etc. Then we began to, 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 to think uh, one thing which is so obvious and we are not so original now with this because may, there are many researchers, researchers doing it uh, through uh, digital, digital uh, devices and, uh, you know, um, uh, then the, the people themselves, all the people, the families we are talking with, they are very uh, familiar with these technologies. We are not arriving with nothing exotic, you know, all the people use WhatsApp, Facebook, etc. Then we, we, uh, we um, began a conversation with uh, our partners there to identify families and people who are who want to, to talk with us, participate in this, in this, in this, in this, in this project, uh, or, or, or at least in the first phase of the project, in the first uh, period of this, we are uh, planning to, to go from uh, last December when we began to June for the first uh, phase, uh, following at least 60 families uh, in a regular basis. No, doing. Uh, I, I I will prefer to to talk about conversations, not interviews. You know, we have of course a kind of guide we, which was extensively discussed among among the team and with our partners over there. But uh, 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 the thing is to transform uh, this kind of intrusion in a, to familiarize, you know, anthropologically or, or ethnographically speaking uh, through a digital media. And we are very happy because it, it is working <laughs> now. We are now uh, going further, doing the second wave of, 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 inter of conversations. And we are planning also to, to put together other kind of methodologies or techniques to visualize the spaces uh, through photographs or maybe videos, uh, drawings uh, to try to, to, we are focusing <laughs> the, the, the main focus of the research, which is about the economic, economics dynamics in this territory, is to focus, our main focus is to, 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 to analyze the relationship between the domestic economies and the houses as, um, as places, physical and moral places and economic places also, and the small business where we, the people are involved in to make their lives. Then the, 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 there is a, a key link we, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the, the, to me at least and to us, the most important link to see now, which is the link between the houses and the business, you know, uh, and we are uh, we were working around this for a long time in another in another projects and researchers in, in Haiti in my case here in another favelas without thinking about emergencies in, in the case of, Bra of Brazil, but now this is this is this is very very key because. The, the, you know, and the, there are many theoretical and empirical issues over there. The, the house is a, an a statistical, for example, an a statistical unity, but it's also uh, which I saw the, the state when they target the house or the domicile or the household, you know, as a, as a target of public policies, for example, to to, uh, to add the families in the time of emergency, they try the, the, the political move, try to isolate, isolate, for example, the houses and the, 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 the lives are all connected. Then we are trying to, to, to catch up these kind of connections, fluxes, 
uh, conversions and trying to, to also to figure out how the people are feeling in this process. How, at what extent this is feeling, this is uh, felt as an extraordinary period or not, how they are endogenous, Endo, uh, how they are endogenizing, I don't know if you can comprehend me, Endo, endogenizing the crisis in the flux of the ordinary life, right. you know, these kind of things, uh, 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 these are uh, the, the key things, for example, one, uh, we are trying to, 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 to follow. And and I think this is a really interesting project, both methodologically and in terms of the work that the, the sort of the thematic focus, right? I mean, there's real relevance to the kind of reinvention or remaking of the employment relation around the world, right? Um, the kind of resurfacing of that classic tension between the domestic and, you know, the work space or, or um, you know, the house and work. But you know, before we get too far down the line here, I did want to take a moment and and because we're um, you know already running through the hour to introduce our graduate students and, and give them the opportunity, Federico, if you don't mind, um, to follow up on what you've already said here. So um, I think I'll hand it off to Nima to ask the first question, and then we'll try to be brief so that we can get these last um, these last few kind of conversational pieces um, in before the end of the hour. Yeah, thank you, Federico. Um, so my uh, question was more related to how like drawing from the varied context of economic and political emergencies that you have engaged with in your personal and intellectual trajectory, could you share a little bit about your reflections on navigating and collectively thinking about the relationship between censorship and intellectual freedom uh, in the context that you worked with anthropology? Wow, <laughs> we are we are living a very now. I, I will I will speak about. Thank you for your question first. Uh, it's very challenging to think about this, and uh, now uh, I will uh, I would like to think about uh, our present time in Brazil to to react or, or, uh, to your uh, to your question. It's very difficult because. Now we are living in a kind of democracy still. <laughs> still, I, I would say, because you know, this kind of process as you lived for a long time also in, in the US or not so long, I don't know, but it, it's, a, it's a very confusing because you are pu public space transformed, then the, the, the kind of intervention transformed, the digital media is a, is a new space, not so new, but not, we can say it's, it's still new space to, 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 to discuss politics and to disseminate uh, research outcomes also, for example. And there are, the, then there, is, there are many spaces where explicit censorship could play or not play. In Brazil now, we are not dealing with an explicit kind of censorship. We are seeing some kind of, of, of uh, threatens in the, for example, when the Brazilian Scientific Council launched a new kind of grants, directing the grants to some sort of themes and obliterating another, for example, this is, you know, you, you can uh, drive the, 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 the scientific production in a sub, sub, subtle uh, way, but not only. There are, there are some, uh, I could say some, uh, uh, subfields that are more delicate now in, in, in here in Brazil. Uh, of course, all linked to environment and Amazonian. Uh, this is very delicate. And as, uh, at the same time that, that, uh, that people in the field, uh, social civil, the, 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 the leaders social, of, of social civil movement are threatened or killed. Anthropologists as well have many problems to, to deal with this uh, situation and need to be very careful. This is one uh, subfield. The other it, it has to do with um, uh, gender relationships and gender issues in general, and particularly uh, uh, um, uh, women rights linked to abortion. Then we have now a new wave of exiled uh, intellectuals in Brazil, mostly those who are working in 
these uh, two subfields who need to take care about what they are saying publicly because they suffer threatens and very, very serious threatens uh, uh, at the point that we are living in a, in a new wave of exile. Then it's a very, very complicated, but on the other side, we can uh, continue to, to, to teach our, our, our courses, uh, protecting ourselves to invasion of, of, of people through the internet, which is a very huge problem also. You know, uh, there are many uh, battlefields now <laughs> and each one uh, demand of us uh, specific uh, attitudes and careful and cares i don't know if i answer your question but i am only trying to react to it because it's very very important and very challenging thank you yes thank you um i actually wanted to pick up on this idea of one of the battlefields so here in the united states i am in a gender woman and sexuality studies department and during the pandemic, these departments have faced a series of cuts. Some of them have been eliminated outright, and then some of them have been like put together into these weird conglomerates, basically, of various other critical departments, which just means that faculty are cut and the amount of funding that goes to these disciplines um, is kind of pushed down. So I guess the question that I have is, given the sort of like political circumstances and also the broader neoliberal funding circumstances that the university faces, how does one sort of counter institutionalize against some of these more uh, dominant uh, forms of institutionalization that seek to eliminate um, more critical work? And I know the situation in Brazil might be different than the one in the United States, but just want to ask. I don't know, no, because we are we are we are talking now. It's February twenty six. We we don't know what will happen next week. You know, <laughs> then it's a process, a process in process. It's a kind of tautology, but it is important to to grasp. Thing. This is very very important. Now institutionally, we are in a kind. We are in a kind of some sort of stability. We are living now. You know, in a, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a daily battlefield, but we are dealing with this. There are, I think, that the pandemic, the pandemic is a is a new thing, unexpected for those who are attacking us and for us, of course, for everybody. And this, uh, I don't know. I I, I think that this um, is in. This reconfigurate in a in a way all the battlefields, change priorities, you know, uh, change people also, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's interesting now because, for example, the the Society for the Improvement of Science in Brazil, the Brazilian Society of the Improvement of Science of the Advancement of, Sci of Sciences. I don't know if the in the U.S. exists something like this. It is a very powerful and very important society, and it's very interesting. The next uh, meeting they will have uh, next month, or it's very uh, now. It's uh, it's named um, uh, it's uh, it's directed exactly to protect the social sciences, and it, this society is is a, is a scientific society, not social sciences only of course but the the theme of the of the meeting is uh, all so all sciences is social sciences it's very interesting it's something like this sorry because my, I, I i i i am not able to translate my english is not so good as you can hear to translate exactly the phrase it is very interesting the 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 place that the scientific um, world uh, recognized to the social sciences in this Brazilian moment, you know, then to make this is a kind, is a way to protect uh, and to, it's, it's a move in the battle, you know, because it's the most important society, it's a move. Uh, the, 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 and there is also, there is a, in, in this, in the rising of the social sciences and the and anthropology, in, in, uh, the Brazilian social science and anthropology, this rising, because we are living in a public space, public institutions, a kind of bureaucracy was created also 
to deal with sciences. And it is not so easy to, 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 destroy, to destroy this uh, bureaucracy, this, this state institutions so quickly, at least. Then uh, as Karl Polanyi uh, said some time ago, all the problem is the timing, you know? <laughs> we, need to, we, need to, we need to deal with time. If we succeed, I think, in an optimistic way, which is necessary to, to, to navigate this time, I think it's the only one way to be optimistic, realistic and optimistic, we need to, 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 we need to be able to intervene in the timing of the process. If we succeed to delay, the time of the destruction, then we, we have uh, some sort of possibility to survive and to make a new kind of sciences, which we don't know what, what kind of science, social sciences, and uh, particularly in the uh, field you are speaking about, which is one of the most sensible uh, field, uh, fields we are uh, dealing with, gender studies, uh, women uh, and, and transgender, for example, uh, or, or everywhere uh, rights, etc. There, there, there is a very, very, very huge uh, battle going on, and all the thing, uh, all the all, all the thing. No, but one of the key issues is timing, to me, in this in this in this aspect. Thanks, Federico. We only have a couple of minutes left, so I'll ask Kim um, to ask her question, and then we'll do a quick response and unfortunately have to wrap up. Thanks, Taylor, uh, and thanks so much, Federico, for really taking us through such a rich way to think about uh, anthropology and public engagement, uh, and I wanted to kind of build on both Nina and Nima's questions and ask if you could say a little bit more uh, about how this notion of public engagement, as well as the current moment of extended crisis shapes uh, the ways in which social scientists are being trained uh, or trained for further work uh, and professionalization, I guess, for grad students, things like that. This is a very, very dramatic issue. No? You are, thank you for your question also, because the, all the problem, if the, one of the problem is time and timing, one of the key issue is what the new generations of, of, of anthropologists of our students will do in, the, in, the, in their life, you know? They are trained, they are being training, trained to, to, to become what in this kind of world? This is one of the most a uh, huge challenge we are facing now. Which kind of promised land we can, we, we are able to imagine our, and to make together uh, professors and students, you know, with the scientific association, the Brazilian Anthropological Association, of course, also, and, and many others. Then this is a very, I don't know, I, I have not an answer uh, to your very important question, but I, I only can say that this is a key issue. What kind of, of world we can imagine and we can, in a, in a very, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, idealistic and realistic mood, we can uh, try to make together to continue to make anthropology. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a very, very, very oof, huge uh, <laughs> challenge for us now. And I think for all of us in this screen, not only this side. <laughs> And, and, you know, I will say, Federico, um, you know, having learned now a little bit about the work that you're doing, you know, um, with, you know, Bredes Mare in, in, um, in Rio, that one of the ways that we're starting to think about that possibility of training is through, you know, learning by doing, right? And so there are, there is a possibility of kind of recovering the possibility of kind of apprenticeship and practice, right, in the way that we train anthropologists. And so I think that there's, there's real promise there and um, as, as, a, as a model. Right, for us to explore. We are coming up on time. So I did wanna just say um, once again, thank you to everyone uh, who's joined us today. Thank you so much for your questions and engagement, Nima, Nina, and Kim. Um, 
Federico, thank you so much for being here. I did catch a little glimpse of your kitty cat in the background, so that was a real <laughs> pleasure of the morning for me. Um, <laughs> I do want to say our next webinar um, in this series and last webinar in this series will be March 12th, um, so a few weeks away, uh, same time at you know 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific here in the United States, and that'll be with Noelle Stout, Dr. Noelle Stout, who's on the research faculty at Apple University um, here in the United States. Um, Bill, any final thoughts, any final comments? No, just again, thank you so much, Federico. Uh, thank you, Kim, Nina, and Nima. And also in the background, we always have Jenny Fan, who's making sure this is a safe and sound Zoom. And uh, Lori has been providing um, live cart captioning, which we so appreciate. All of that will be available on the website um, soon, like probably Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also thankful that the gods of the internet like kept all this together and uh, we were able to have such a uh, fascinating conversation. Um, yeah, timing is everything. So we have to like work on that. <laughs> Thank you again, Federico. Thanks everyone. Um, and enjoy the rest of the day and your weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.